His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Skhir Palace the first Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defence and Minister of Interior of Kuwait, Sheikh Fahad Yusuf Saud Al Sabah, during his visit to Bahrain. Sheikh Fahad conveyed the greetings and appreciation to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and his good wishes to Bahrain and its people for continued progress and prosperity under His Majesty's wise leadership. During the meeting, His Majesty welcomed Sheikh Fahad and requested Sheikh Fahad to convey his greetings and best wishes for good health and happiness to His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, as well as to the Kuwaiti people, wishing them continued development and prosperity. His Majesty expressed pride in the depth of historical relations and solid fraternal ties between the two countries, which are growing stronger in light of the joint keenness to support them for the interest of the two brotherly peoples. His Majesty praised the leading role played by His Highness the Emir of Kuwait in developing Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations and the honorable stances of Kuwait towards Bahrain and its good efforts in supporting joint Gulf and Arab action. His Majesty emphasized the importance of continuous consultation and coordination between Bahrain and Kuwait, especially in the current circumstances and challenges facing the region, in order to further strengthen and support their fraternal relations and serve their mutual interests. For his part, Sheikh Fahad expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the generous hospitality and warm reception, affirming his pride in His Majesty's efforts to consolidate bilateral cooperation and further strengthen the deep-rooted ties between their brotherly peoples. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Skhir Palace the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK, David Lamy, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain. His Majesty welcomed the UK Secretary of State and reviewed with him the course of Bahraini-British relations, stressing the mutual keenness to further develop them and strengthen their ties at all levels, serving common goals and interests. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's pride in its strong strategic relations and close historical partnership with the UK, which spans a long history of alliance, cooperation, solid coordination and constructive joint action in all fields. His Majesty hailed the effective role played by the UK in the regional and international arenas and its efforts and constructive contributions in consolidating the pillars of security and stability in the region and the world. His Majesty and the UK Secretary of State also discussed regional and international developments and exchanged views on developments in the Middle East, particularly the humanitarian crises in Gaza. His Majesty emphasized the need to de-escalate the conflict, prevent its expansion, provide full protection to civilians in accordance with the rules of international humanitarian law, release detainees, and further intensify efforts to reach an agreement for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza, allowing adequate humanitarian aid to be provided to the population, alleviating their sufferings, and work to find a clear path to a just, lasting and comprehensive peace based on the two-state solution to ensure the preservation of security and stability in the region. His Majesty also affirmed the need to further de-escalation in Lebanon to preserve its sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain supports any efforts or movement to establish peace in the region that is in line in the interests of its countries for it being the path towards achieving development and prosperity for all its peoples. For his part, the UK Secretary of State expressed appreciation to His Majesty for the warm welcome and generous hospitality, highly valuing His Majesty's role in strengthening the long-standing and strong ties of friendship with his country, which always looks forward to expanding its bilateral cooperation for the benefit of the two countries and the interests of their peoples. He affirmed that Bahrain is an important strategic partner for the UK in the region.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the first Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defence and Minister of Interior of Kuwait, Sheikh Fahad Yusuf Saud al-Sabah at Dhabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the long-standing Bahrain-Kuwait relations which continue to be supported by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Ahmed al-Jabar al-Sabah. His Royal Highness conveyed his greetings to the Emir of Kuwait, the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamid Al Mubarak Al Sabah, and the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. He reaffirmed the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening the multisectoral partnership for the benefit of both nations and their peoples. His Royal Highness commended Kuwait's role in furthering bilateral ties, their efforts to enhance joint Gulf and Arab work streams, and their honorable stances towards Bahrain. During the meeting, the latest regional and international developments, issues of common interest, and ways to further strengthen the bilateral relations were discussed. For his part, Kuwait's first Deputy Prime Minister expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to strengthening the bilateral partnership. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received the UK Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs, David Lamy. His Royal Highness emphasized the strength of the historic Bahrain-UK strategic partnership supported by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Charles III. His Royal Highness welcomed David Lamy and the accompanying delegation, highlighting the importance of furthering collaboration between the two kingdoms. He affirmed the UK's prominent role alongside allied countries in consolidating the foundation of security, peace and stability in the region. He also emphasized the importance of joint efforts in promoting sustainable development to benefit all. During the meeting, issues of common interest were discussed, including the latest regional and international developments. The discussion also emphasized the importance of cessation of regional escalation. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of furthering efforts for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza and to find fair, lasting and comprehensive peace based on the two-state solution. In highlighting the necessity of preserving the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of Lebanon, His Royal Highness underscored Bahrain's support for all regional and international efforts aimed at establishing peace and avoiding further tension and conflicts to preserve the overall development and prosperity. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, yesterday chaired the sixth GSA board meeting. His Highness reviewed GSA's recent work plan, which included various sports initiatives such as the Khalid bin Hamid Golden Generation Athletics League and the Golden Bank Initiative, in addition to the efforts towards upcoming activities, including the Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Hamid Academy for Football and the Khalid bin Hamid Golden Generation League, alongside other programs aimed at advancing sports. His Highness directed to intensify efforts towards the privatization of sports facilities and the issuance of regulations governing sports investment. He was also briefed on amendments to the model regulation for national clubs. The meeting reviewed the progress of the Executive Committee for the International School Sport Federation Gymnasia at Bahrain 2024, set to take place on October 23rd to the 31st under the patronage of His Majesty the King. His Highness was updated on the committee's efforts and praised their work in preparing for the event. His Highness stressed the importance of working for the next phase to complete all arrangements in a way that fits the status of the kingdom and hosting major sporting events. The event will feature over 5,000 students from more than 70 countries competing in 26 sports. His Highness wished the organizers success in their preparations. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the first Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defense and Minister of Interior of Kuwait, Sheikh Fahad Yusuf Saud Al Sabah. He was accompanied by the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, and BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi. 
The BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed Sheikh Fahad, praising the depth of the strong fraternal relations between the two countries and the progress and growth of this historical relations, thanks to the leadership of the both countries, which contributed to strengthening the sincere fraternal relations existing in all military and defense fields. The Field Marshal praised the good positions of Kuwait towards Bahrain and its efforts to support joint Gulf and Arab action. The meeting was attended by a number of senior officials at the BDF and from the Kuwaiti side, the Ambassador of Kuwait to Bahrain, Sheikh Thamar Jabr al Ahmed al-Sabah. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the first Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defense, and Minister of Interior of Kuwait, Sheikh Fahad Yusuf Saud al Sabah, upon his arrival to Bahrain, leading a high level security delegation. The Interior Minister and the Kuwaiti Minister headed to the Ministry's building, where the Guards of Honor saluted them. Present were the Deputy Minister of Interior, the Chief of Public Security and a number of senior Ministry officials. Then the official discussion session between the two sides began, during which General Sheikh Rashid welcomed Sheikh Fahad and the, and the delegation, hailing this visit, which reflects the depth of historic ties between the two countries under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Ahmed al-Jabr al-Sabah. 
The Interior Minister noted that this visit comes at a delicate time for the region, which calls for continued coordination and cooperation to strengthen security and interdependence between the two brotherly countries. He praised the close cooperation in various fields of security work and the achievements of the Joint Security Committee, which was formed to activate the MOU signed between the two countries within the framework of joint efforts to enhance security and stability and unify positions in the face of current and future security challenges. They discussed a number of important security topics of mutual interest within the framework of enhancing cooperation and security work and building on what has been achieved to improve performance to face security challenges and rapid regional and international challenge changes. The Interior Minister then presented a commemorative gift to Sheikh Fahad. The Kuwaiti First Deputy Premier wrote a message in the visit register in which he expressed pleasure to visit the ministry and meet with the minister and discuss ways to enhance relations between the two countries to serve common interests and fulfill the aspirations of the leadership of the two brotherly peoples. He also expressed thanks for the warm reception and generous hospitality. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, met with the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK, David Lamy, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain. During the meeting, they discussed aspects of strong friendship relations between the two countries, the advanced level they have reached, means of developing them in the political, economic, commercial, and development fields, and expanding the horizons of joint cooperation in areas that serve common interests. The two sides also reviewed the latest developments in the region, the ongoing war in Gaza and Lebanon, and the Arab and international efforts being exerted to achieve an immediate and permanent ceasefire, reduce tension and escalation, address the humanitarian situation, deliver relief aid to the civilian population and displaced people, and advance efforts to achieve a just and comprehensive peace in the region. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning signed agreements to implement 123 housing units in the areas of Al-Bahir and Hurat Sanad and the Southern Governorate. In partnership with the Saraya and Nemal real estate companies within the framework of the projects included in the Government Land Development Rights Program in partnership with the private sector. The agreement was signed by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, the Chairman and CEO of a Saraya company, Saud Kano, which is implementing the housing project in Al-Bahir, and General Manager of Enamel Companies, Laji George, which is implementing the housing project in Hurat Sanad. Ramehi affirmed that signing the agreements comes in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister regarding the expansion of the Government Land R Development Rights Program. She praised the level of cooperation with the Saraya and Enamel companies, noting the great turnout by real estate development companies to apply for bids to implement the Government Land Development Rights Program projects. And for more on this topic, we are joined over the phone by the Assistant Under Secretary for Engineering Affairs at the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, Engineer Balsam Al Salman. Hello and welcome, Engineer Al Salman. Can you tell us the details of the Ministry's conclusion of the agreements to implement 123 housing units in Al Bahir and Hurat Sanad? Um, good evening. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, today, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning signed two contracts. Uh, agreements uh, to implement 123 housing uh, units uh, in Al Buhair and Hurat Sanad in the Southern Governorate in a partnership with uh, Saraya and Nam real estate uh, uh, co companies. Uh, of course, this uh, progress in the develop uh, government land development program is certainly the result of the ministry commitment to implement the directives of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Uh, the the Crown Prince uh, and the Prime Minister regarding the expansion of the Government Land Development Program. Um, uh, in this uh, context, I would like to note that the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning will launch a new auctions uh, to the developers during the coming period uh, in the various governorates of Bahrain. Uh, as uh, for the details for the first agreement, uh, it will include the implementation of the residential project in Al Buhair uh, area in a partnership with uh, a Saraya company on an area of 20,000 square meters, and the project will provide 76 residential units. Um, and uh, as for the second uh, agreement, it will include a residential project in uh, Haurat Sanad area uh, on an area of uh, 10,000 meters, and it will include uh, four, uh, 47 residential units. And uh, I would like to add uh, that all of these projects uh, will be allocated to the citizens who wish 
to benefit uh, from the financial programs that the ministry provides uh, to the citizen uh, through TISHEAL and the new category of Mazaya financing scheme. Assistant Under Secretary for Engineering Affairs at the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, Engineer Balsam Salman, thank you for joining us. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning launched an electronic service for submitting requests for housing units specifically designed for individuals with disabilities. This service allows citizens holding a nomination certificate to apply for accessible housing units if a family member has a disability. The initiative aims to ensure that housing units are tailored to meet the specific needs associated with various disabilities, thereby expediting the process for families to benefit from these accommodations upon project completion. The Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, the ABEGS, and the Arabian Gulf University, the AGU, inaugurated a joint scientific chair focused on Gulf identity and citizenship. The inauguration was attended by the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jama'a, the Director General of the ABEGS, Dr. Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed Al Asami, and the President of the AGU, Dr. Saad bin Saud Al Fahid. The Minister of Education highlighted that this initiative aligns with the significant roles of the ABEGS and the AGU in further promoting integrated collaboration among the GCC. He emphasized that it reinforces the historical bonds among Gulf nations and their commitment of cooperation under the leadership of the GCC leaders. Dr. Al-Asami noted that this scientific chair aims to enhance research and interest in Gulf identity and citizenship, supporting activities such as writing, translation and training in this domain. Dr. Al Fahid praised the GCC leader's dedication to further fostering Gulf identity and citizenship, which is essential for national development. Additionally, a joint research chair agreement was signed between ABEGS and the AGU, as well as a memorandum. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, participated as a keynote speaker in the luncheon organized by the Bahraini British Business Forum in the presence of the British Ambassador to Bahrain, Alastair Long, and the Chairman of the Forum, Khalid Rashid Zayani, and a number of officials. Fakhro affirmed the depth of historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, especially in the fields of trade and investment. The Minister noted that Bahrain has always been a gateway for business in the region, noting that Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 provides a clear path towards a diversified and sustainable economy, with a focus on innovation investment and international partnerships. He also highlighted Bahrain's orientation towards investing in technology with the aim of achieving leadership in digital transformation and noting the British experience in this field. He highlighted the steps taken by Bahrain to expand the available facilities and promote the provision of a business-friendly environment to attract more foreign investments. The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa, participated in the closing ceremony of the sixth edition of the National Leadership Program, Hypo Youth, in the presence of the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Marwan Fuad Kamal, and a number of graduates and organizers of the program, which is organized by the Institute in coordination with the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Dr. Sheikh Rana affirmed the Institute's keenness to organize the program in line with the government's directives aimed at supporting knowledge, creativity, and investment in Bahraini youth. She added that the outputs of the program program represented by the preparation of more than 40 national projects and studies reflect the outcome of Bahrain's initiatives and programs to promote Bahraini youth, praising the pivotal role played by the youth in proposing effective ideas and solutions to advance various sectors in the kingdom. For his part, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Youth Affairs said that the number of beneficiaries of programs since its launch reached 273, while the program hosted more than 30 national leaders from various sectors. He stressed that the success of the program came thanks to the plan set by the Kingdom in recognition of the ambition and competence of the Bahraini youth and their ability to compete.
The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid Al Hajri, opened the Najla bin Muhammad Al Kaabi Mosque in Asker. Sheikh Dr. Al Hajri praised the noble directors of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and affirmed their continuous support for the construction of mosques to ensure their development in line with the authentic Bahraini identity. He added that the Sunni Waqf Council works continuously to implement Bahrain's vision by providing the necessary support to enhance the mission of the mosque and focus on religious programs that promote cohesion between different segments of society. He appreciated the generous support of do donors in the construction of the mosque and its facilities. Roots World 2024 concluded after the wide participation of more than 2,300 of the most prominent global figures in the aviation sector from all over the world. The uh, significance of, of, of hosting a Roots event is multifaceted. Um, every event has an economic impact. We have over 2,500 delegates here, um, and they're all staying in hotels and spending money in, re in restaurants, so that immediate impact is, is going to be significant. We also bring a massive industry media um, uh, group here, so the story of Bahrain will also go around the world, and there's a huge profile impact uh, that Bahrain will, will uh, benefit from. And um, What we're most proud about is actually a mid to long term benefit, so Roots is a catalyst, an accelerator for growth, uh, and we have independent research that identifies the past hosts of Roots World have an accelerated network of around 5.2%, which equates to about $132 million worth of economic impact over a three to five year period. And that's a very measurable amount based on the new routes that Bahrain will attract and routes play a part in that acceleration. And we're really, really proud of that.